Hello and welcome back. The fun just does not stop. So today we're going to play with Z Image, a new, brand new image model from the uh, Tongi, I believe, Tongi Labs. Anyway, it's a it's a Alibaba, um, the creators of Quen and Wan. Their organization made a foundational image generation model and there's some really cool stuff about this model so let's jump over here and so here let me zoom in so here is the z image turbo now like there's a lot like i said there's a lot of really cool stuff about this model first and foremost six billion parameters that means this model can run on macbooks it can run on low consumer grade hardware and as someone who came from like the sd15 stable diffusion 1.5 world like myself this is exciting because over the last couple of years the models have just gotten bigger and more demanding and almost to a diminishing return level of quality so i'm really excited to see z image because the quality is so good, guys, but it's really small, and that's awesome. Um, and it, it sounds like they're going to release their non-distilled version of their model at some point, too. We aim to unlock further potential of community-driven fine-tuning custom development. That's awesome. I mean, Pongi Labs here, um, the, uh, Quen, the Quen group, they um, have been just steamrolling open source and i'm so stoked to see the non-distilled version of this model again we're gonna we're gonna get in it get into it in just a second but i just wanted to go through this model sweep because there's a roadmap here that we should all be aware of and then we have zed image edit so you know nano banana flux context quen image edit um these are all models that uh you can edit with image reference embeddings Excuse me, just had to cough. But yeah, so there's a lot of really cool stuff that they're doing. Um, it can type. Um, they're showing off some of the edit capabilities. Again, we don't have access to that. It's on their roadmap. Some performance benchmarks, et cetera, et cetera. But let's come over here to Comfy for a second and let's play with it for a minute. So here's the workflow, guys. Super, super simple. We're, we're, we're using the Quen. 3 4 billion parameter VLM model. So basically this is a language model, guys. Like if I just put a uh, Quen VL or just VL I believe. Yeah, here you go. Um I can literally go download different nodes in Comfy just to run the 2.5 version of the language model. And so we've gotten to that point again. I've said it a few times where like the text encoders are literally language models. Um, and if you don't know what a text encoder does, it's a AI neural network that encodes text or it interprets text um, and then gets sent into a K sampler to be rendered alongside with the model weights. So this model is interpreting our text, but it was also trained on pictures. It's a VLM, a vision language model. Um, and so it has like really good semantic understanding between pixels and text. And so what we can, what that means, all that fancy jargon is we can get the model to write and type really, really well. Um, a woman sitting in the park holding a newspaper, close up shot, newspaper reads Z image is finally here um yeah let's see what happens and just effortlessly z image is finally here and so like yeah guys like that was hold on did we take in this to, just to realize how fast that was like sub five roughly five seconds i'm on a 6000 pro but i'm on the 300 watt version I'm going to guess that on a MacBook Air M3, M4, you could probably get this thing running in like like 40 second, 30 second, 40 second renders at 1024. Like that, that is so refreshing. 
And number one, it can type. And so like, that's huge. Number two, it's super fast. Number three, it's lightweight. A lot of, uh, a lot of hardware can run it. But it also actually just looks amazing. So I'm going to jump over to GPT and just get some prompts because uh, it is a language model. So it is comfortable with huge swaths of text. So uh, write me a prompt um, that depicts beautiful vintage photography. Just need something simple. Okay, cool. Paste that in here. And beautiful of a, I mean, flowers, sure. Let's just use flowers. I just love how fast this model is. Yeah, that's that's gorgeous. That looks like vintage photography. Yeah. Let's do um, people playing basket basketball action shots. Yeah, this is really awesome, guys. Really, really awesome. I'm gonna have all the links uh, to the model and the workflow um, in the description. Please, please, please go play with this. I am so excited that uh one one of the labs finally woke up to the fact that like we can get really good efficiency out of small neural networks if they're utilized correctly and that's that's exactly what we're seeing here let's see a batch size up to like eight i just want to see i want to see number one how fast it is number two ooh, look at that yeah some so this is a distilled model, right? And for what for you for those of you who do not understand what a distilled model is, it's a parent teacher relationship. And so basically they have their big foundational model, right? 100 billion parameters. I think it's 100 billion, but it's a massive model, right? And it's super smart. Well, they do this thing called a parent uh, a teacher student distillation where the main model teaches the small model how to perform its tasks in a uh, like accelerated kind of way, right? We're kind of just like skipping the line and getting like the master's secret sauce right away. And uh, what that results in is models that do not require CFG. You can do CFG, CFG distillation. You can also do step distillation as well as like a few other things. But CFG is essentially classifier-free guidance. It basically drives how much your prompt affects it, right? Now, as you can see here, my positive prompt is plugged both into positive and negative. Well, upon, like, intuitive nature, that sounds crazy. Like, it sounds conflicting, right? But because my CFG is at 1, when the CFG is at 1, it doesn't encode or it doesn't process the negative prompt at all. And so what is the result of that? The result of that is it's only processing half of the data, so it's twice as fast. And that's how, that's one trick that this model is so fast. It's, it's very common across Flux, and if anyone's used LCM LoRa's or Light, Light, Light X2V LoRa's, it's the same idea. That's how distillation works for CFG. Step distillation is pretty much the same thing as well, but for steps, right? You're teaching the model to perform diffusion with a, a fewer amount of noise removal steps. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I have double positive and negative plugged into one in code, because it doesn't matter. There is no negative prompt here, so there's no point having one. So one thing I wanted to, to figure out is, like, how flexible is the model seed now usually in distillation uh models the composition suffers but this seems okay the variance is good enough where it's following my prompt um but i still get options where uh the quen image model the distillation suffered pretty badly uh, um from that let's get another one Let's uh let's do dog mid air catching a hot dog in the background. A plane flies overhead with a banner that reads mm, machine delusions. Let's see if it works. Oh, I'm also running eight at a time. I mean that's okay. No, let's cancel it. Screw it. We'll just run four. Yep. Very, very satisfied. 
And so I'm really looking forward to fine tuning this. Laura's, I mean, if if this architecture seems sound, clearly, these images look amazing. Look at the quality of this. This is a 1024 squared. Like this is very good quality given the size of the model. I've seen models three times as big not be able to produce images this clean. The texture, the bokeh, the the fine grain detail on the fur. Like this is this is a very good foundational model. Also, it can write. Every, it literally followed my prompts to a T. Except the plane. It is a banner, but it's not on the plane. But also that was like my fault. I could have conveyed it better. Um let's try its let's try its reasoning abilities. Uh a red box filled with green with three green balls sitting on the floor overhead a yellow lamp shines down while a raccoon writes in a notebook in a 1990s vintage living bedroom Fujifilm photography. So this model definitely was fine-tuned. Damn, that's that's the prompt. I said three, three green balls. There's four there. Let's see. Let's run a different seed. No. AI, AI model still can't count. That's that's still a thing, Im, image-wise. They, uh, they have trouble counting. So the other thing here, too, guys, is this model was heavily designed for realism. It does realism better than it does anime, than it does many other styles. However, I would imagine training this model would be incredibly fast. I have seen some talks that it might not even be possible to train. I don't doubt that. Pixel art girl sitting on a bench. Let's see. Does pixel art decently enough? What about anime girl walking through a park? The rest of the world she's in is realism, and she's a cartoon. Pretty cool. And that is really good for the size of this model. What about extreme aspect ratios? 2048, 256. Yep. Oh, DIT, baby. Just figures it out. Still looks really good, too. And so... Let's go back to our, I'm just going to do 768, 1024. I like a nice portrait. And let's do, let's build a quick little upscaler. So nothing really to this workflow, guys. Model of VE. Um, I didn't really talk about the VE. The VE is actually Flux 1. So the AE VE. So you've probably seen this before if you've ever touched Flux. This is the same VE. VE stands for Variable Auto Encoder. It's the compression part of diffusion um, it does all the compression it's from flux so nothing really special there and then of course i'm running the bf16 weights from z image you can also get them from the official comfy z image turbo repo um, again all the links in the description etc cetera, etc cetera. but let's build a quick little upscaler so i think i'm just gonna resize by factor i don't i just want to get to do this dirty so Basically, I'm just going to scale up the pixels 1.5 times. Bilinear is fine. And then I'm going to encode. And we need our ve. And then I'm going to feed it into... So what I just did there is I selected everything, copied it. Uh, Control-Shift-V instead of just Control-V. And I, it comes up with all the connections. Now I can encode this back down. And there we go. So now I need... I'm going to lower the denoise by 5. And also I'm using the Res 2S sampler. So I am hitting this. This model is actually faster than what I was leading on. If I set this back to Euler, for example, and I just hit go. Like, look at that thing fly. It's crazy fast. You know what? Let's just leave it at Euler because it's just so satisfying. But Res 2S hits it twice. It, it, it hits the image tw two times per denoise step. So it's just very fast. Also, something to note is the model does work well at low steps. I'm just going to do one step. So that's one step. That's two steps. Pretty good. Not, not quite, but pretty good. Three steps. Honestly, at three steps, that's 
pretty acceptable. But honestly, four steps, boom. And this model is pretty, pretty much there. We're just going to run it at eight because that's what it was distilled to be. I believe it was eight or nine. And then we're upscaling the pixels. We're encoding the image back into a latent. And we're going to denoise again at a 0.5. So it should be 1024 times 1 1.5. It'll be 1536 on this end. It's pretty good. We lost some of the realism. It kind of got flattened out along the way. Maybe we need more denoise. 0 0.6. That looks about right. Maybe... Maybe you scale it up by two, so we're going to go to 2048. I just love the style of this. This It feels like it has film grain baked into it. I don't know. This is the first model I've felt where it's almost cinematic. Really interesting. So let's play around with some more prompts. Write a beautiful, write a prompt about a ship at sea. I want to see how it does. I'm not a creative writer, guys. I'm real sorry. It's just not my strong suit. Wow. For a one-shot 1024 768 image and the subject is so far, that's a really nice picture. And then again, our upscaled one, a lot more detail in the boat. I don't know. This feels really nice. Let's do a pirate ship. Extreme low angle of a pirate ship passing by from the view of a small life raft, a man looks up in shock as the ship passes closely. It did it. Doesn't make sense, but what are you looking at, dude? The boat's behind you. We gotta randomize this. Interesting. A man running from a thousand chickens. They all have hats on. Oh my god, that is a lot of chickens. He's not running from them. He's running with, running into them. Looks pretty good. Hands messed that up a little bit. Things are a little out of focus, but honestly, pretty good. Let's uh, bump the denoise up and let's bump the resolution up. I want to render this at 3,000 pixels. Let's see if I can do it. Made a little more bokeh than what I wanted here. But anyways, guys, this is a fun one. I'm really going to keep close tabs on uh, this model and the edit model coming out. Again, all the links in the description for the this quick little workflow I threw together, as well as the links for all the models. This is one you guys do not want to miss. It is one that I pretty much can guarantee will run on everyone's local machine, which is awesome, Max included. And, uh, and stay tuned for some more tutorials. I think I'm going to do some 101s to Comfy. I know there's a lot of new people entering the space. Not a lot of solid information. But uh, I want to do a, one -on, a 101 of how to master Comfy at some point. But anyways, see you guys in the next one.